Lesson 3-5, Part B. Equations of Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. Let's write the equation of the line that passes through 1-5 and is parallel to the line with the equation y equals 3x minus 5. Well, if they're parallel, they have the same slope. So if this is y equals mx plus b, the slope is 3. All right, that was first step. We needed our slope. They don't tell us the y-intercept. I mean, they do for the equation that's there, but we don't use that one. It's going to be a different y-intercept because it'll be a different line. But we do know it goes to the point 1, 5. So x would be 1, y would be 5. So I have y equals mx plus b. y was 5, m is 3, x is 1. 3 times 1. Subtract the 3. So b is 2. So our answer, y equals mx plus b. We're going to fill in the slope and the b. So y equals 3x plus 2. Another example. Write an equation of the line perpendicular to the line in the graph and passing through 3, 1. Okay, so we want to be perpendicular to this line. So the first thing to write an equation of a line is we need the slope. So the slope of the graph, well, we could use the slope formula. First point could be x1, y1. The second point could be x2, y2. So my slope would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or 2 over 3. The perpendicular slope is the negative reciprocal. So this perpendicular slope, I'm going to take that 2 over 3, I'm going to turn it upside down, make it 3 over 2, and I'm going to change the sign. 2 over 3 is positive, so my perpendicular slope is negative 3 over 2. And I need some point. I know my point is 3, 1, so I know my x would be 3 and my y would be 1. So if y equals mx plus b, the y is 1. I'm using the perpendicular slope, so negative 3 over 2, and x is 3. To multiply a fraction with a whole number, we put it over 1 and multiply straight across. So 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 1 is 2, plus b. Add the 9 over 2. Oh, I need a common denominator to add a fraction. So I'm going to multiply the 1 by 2 over 2. So now I have 2 halves plus 9 halves would be 11 halves for b. So there we go. I know my slope. And I know my y-intercept. So y equals mx plus b. Fill in the slope and fill in the b. And that is the equation of this line, which would be Something like that. We can also find the distance from a point to a line. Remember, when you measure distance from a point to a line, we want to measure the perpendicular distance, which will be the shortest distance. So we could find the equation of the line perpendicular to the given line and passing through the point. So this is step one. It's find the equation of that line, or at least the slope. 
Step two, use a graph or system of equations to find where the lines intersect. So step two is find that point. Step three, find the distance between the given point and the point of intersection. So step three is find that distance using the distance formula. So let's find the distance from the point 6, negative 2, to the line 2x minus 4. Maybe I could start by graphing 6, negative 2. It's right there. Maybe I'll call that point P. And then I need the line 2x minus 4. So the y-intercept is negative 4, and the slope is 2, or 2 over 1. So I go up 2 over 1, up 2, over 1. And I get this line right there. All right, so I have my point and my line. I want the perpendicular segment from my point to the line. So I need to find the slope of the line. Uh, which we got from our equation, it was 2. But I want the perpendicular slope. So I reciprocal the 2. It was 2 over 1, so I reciprocal it, become 1 over 2, and change the sign. Now, from there, I could write the equation of this, or maybe I could graph it. And let's see how that works. I could go down 1 over 2, but that's off my graph. So I could go backwards. I could go up 1 and backwards 2. Up 1 and backwards 2. And conveniently, I want right into this point. So my point of intersection would be 2, 0. And my point P was 6, negative 2. So to find my distance, I'm going to have to use the distance formula. All right, so my distance, I'm going to call my first point x1, y1. My second point will be x2, y2. So x2 is 6, x1 is 2 y2 is negative 2, y1 is 0. So that gives me 4 squared, 16, and negative 2 squared is 4. So I have the square root of 20. Well, we could simplify that. We could say 20 is 4 times 5. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 5. Or you could put it in your calculator and get about 